Okay, at somebody's request, I'm going to make a little demonstration video showing how to make a short blade knife using PVC. This is going to be fun, easy, and relatively quick. In under an hour, start to finish, not counting any detail work, finishing, and things like that. So, let's get started. Okay, this is our piece of PVC. These are scraps that I have left over 24 inches long, two feet. That makes it really simple. So now, use your ruler, measuring from one end, 14 and a half inch ahead and do that now. And that's going to tell you the length of the blade. At that point, all we're going to do is heat it up using the heat gun. This is what I'm using, a Wagner 1000 watt heat gun. It works really, really well. And we're going to flatten it. And I'll show you the technique for all of that in just a minute. Okay, so I went ahead, marked the 14 and a half inches, just took a normal carpenter's pencil, and I like to mark a ring around it so that way as you rotate it, when you heat it through this aluminum channel, you don't get mixed up about exactly where you're heating to as you go back and forth with the heat gun. So, that's all I'm going to be doing from now on. I'll show you as soon as I have it all heated, and we'll talk about flattening it. Okay, so now after heating the pipe, it should be soft, pliable, and pinching throughout, you should find that it's nice and soft. At this point, what we're going to do is discard the heating jig, or the channel, and I'm going to take a little pine board, just a normal pine board, and we're going to go ahead, put it on one side, and then the other, pushing down pushing down to flatten it as evenly as possible. It's sort of hard to see what I'm doing, but now once I flatten it, to make sure it's even, flip it over to the other side and do the same thing on that side. Just put my elbow on it and push down with all my weight. Really, this is hard to do when I'm holding the camera, but you get the idea. It's going to taper it fairly evenly from one side to the tip. I'm going to reheat this and do it with both hands so I can do it properly, and you'll see the result. Before it's fully set, just like it is now, I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure to give the blade just a tiny bit of curve, just like that. You see how it's not exactly straight now. That's just what we're going to do to the finished blade, although the finished one will be a little bit more flat because I'll be using two hands, not holding the camera with one hand. Good thing is next week I'll have a little stand to put it on the tripod so we'll be able to take pictures without using both my hands. Okay, so you can see now what I've done. I went back, heated it all up again, and uh, flattened it. It's balanced. If you went ahead and flattened it only on one side, you'd have the blade on one side. If you want it centered, you have to flip it over in the middle of the, the shaping process and flatten it again on the other side. Don't worry if your tip is not completely flattened. You're going to reheat that area, and you're going to be cutting a whole good portion of that off. Now, I said I was going to curve it. I actually haven't yet done that. I'm going to apply a little bit of heat just to the middle section of the bow, not until it starts to puff up. I'm going to grab it on both sides and just bend it against my knee to apply that bend. Just a quick note about the way that I heat it. Using the heat gun, I find if you heat from one end to the other and back again, the ends get a lot hotter than the center because you keep hitting them basically twice as often and you're slowing down as you get to the ends. So if you go ahead and go about two-thirds of the way and go back, a third of the way, then to the end, and then rotate it. That way you're applying more heat to the center portion, which otherwise would be a lot stiffer. This way the heat tends to be well distributed throughout, and it just heats up at a nice even rate. That's my little technique, and I think you'll find that effective. So let me go ahead, I'm going to apply the bend, and then I'll show you how to mark the tip for the portion that we're going to cut out before we finish shaping it. So at this point I went back, heated it, from here to here, grab both ends and bent it on my knee. Provides a little gentle curve to the back.
which we're going to accentuate somewhat by removing some of the material from the front leading edge to taper the blade to make it a nice graceful tip. So to do that, take your carpenter's pencil or pen, you could use a sharpie, whatever you want, measure about four or five inches inward, just make a little mark. Go to the other end here, measure about a third, maybe a little bit more than that of an inch in. That's going to be the very tip of the blade. And then from one end over to there, just draw a curve. I'll go back a few times till it looks nice and graceful, till I'm satisfied with the shape. That's really not all that important. But once you have that, you're going to take a blade. I use a coping saw. I find that to be really effective at cutting through the PVC. And I start at this end and very, very carefully cut till this end to try and taper it as perfectly as you can until it basically just pops through on its own. You don't want to force it through at the end because you're, otherwise you're going to have to file that away to make it look nice. So I'll go do that and show you what it looks like. Great, so I took the coping saw, started over here, and just sawed very carefully in a slight curve over towards the end. So that's what it looks like. This is why I was saying not to worry too much about getting the very tip flat because it's not going to be flat throughout here. To make it flat, we're going to have to reheat this whole edge here and then I pinch it together. You can almost get it to a nice rounded edge just by pinching it alone once it's nice and warm. So now I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll work on the handle. I'll also give you a tip. This section of the blade can look a lot more graceful if it's a little bit less flat because as much as you flatten it, it will widen out and this is the flattest. This is not substantially thinner or thicker here so it's going to be about as wide. If you want it to taper from a more thick blade here to a thinner blade just heat this area a little bit more and then it'll round up just like the handle and it'll be thinner just like the handle and then you'll get a nice taper from one end to the other. It looks pretty nice if you do that. If you don't it'll still look great. Either way I'm going to go heat this section here and we can then uh, I'll show you the pinching. All right, so here, after a little bit of heating, you can see it almost wants to pucker itself up. So now we just take it and pinch, pinch, pinch all the way down to try and continue to make it nice and, well, blade-like. Okay, so now once it's nice and hot, you can just go ahead and pinch it all along into that blade-like shape, just like so. Now you see again the tip isn't perfect, that's okay. Just go back and heat that portion of it again, continue pinching. And you'll get it nice and tapered. That'll help that you don't have to remove quite so much. I use files. You could also just hack with the edge of a, a blade, a hacksaw or the coping saw to try and finish it off. I'm just going to go back ahead, pinch it, and then we will file it round all of the edges here to make it nice and play safe. I mean this is a, it's not exactly a toy, but it's a dummy weapon. You want it to be safe and yet still look pretty cool. So let me get working. All right. So that's pretty darn good. From one end to the other, it's fairly well tapered. In fact, one of the cut edges almost forms the edge of a blade. So you can just work from that. The tip is still a little teensy bit open, but that's okay. You're going to be rounding it and you can fill that with hot glue, with epoxy, whatever you like. Or if you really, really want to, you can go ahead and clamp it and pinch it. I'll show you how we do that in the bottom later when we make the handle. So right now, I'm just going to run a file all along the edges and then we'll get to working on the handle. Okay, now I went ahead and you can probably see smoothed out the edges with a file. Then I went over with just some coarse sandpaper to take away some of the little bits of plastic that stick on as well as remove some of the tooling marks. So right now it's not sharp, it's not rough. It just looks okay, looks pretty good. I'm pretty satisfied with that. And now, like I said, I'm going to work on the handle. So here it is. From here to there, all we're going to do is heat this thing up the same way that we heated the blade up, but then we're going to curve it just gently towards the blade edge. Not away, or don't leave it straight. You can if you want. You do whatever you like, but this blade in particular, 
curves gently and then a little bit more severely towards the tip end. And I'll show you what to do to cap off the end and how to seal that. Looks nice. So from here, I'll start here and then cut out and I'll show you the finished product or I'll show you the bending of it rather. Okay, so now the handle is nice and soft. So what I do is, first of all, take a clamp, a nice Irwin pump clamp here, quick grip. Grab the end. This will take one second. There we go. Okay. Grab the end like so, along with the blade. Uh, you don't want it perpendicular. You want it the same way as the blade. And I grab it, put my weight on the blade, and bend the handle forward just like so. So now you have a nice curvature to the blade and you're capping the end to your and you're sealing it off so that it's really uh, totally an enclosed space from one end to the other. You really could plug it up with hot glue if you wanted to make it even more airtight, but at this rate it's pretty darn good. So you just get the curvature you're looking for and then you can let it go. It'll start to cool off. The other thing you're going to want to do is reverse it, make sure you cool it from one side then the other, otherwise it'll start to sag. So as you're doing it here you can start to check for straightness. That's pretty good. You can go back and you can straighten it again later if you want. But that's the basic idea of it all. So I'll show you the uh, blade once I take this off.